Thanks for joining us again as we continue with Glenville Teachings to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. I really feel like we're called to glorify God through our struggles, like while it's going on and allow our lives to continue to still be an example through that. And sometimes we say like, maybe I should wait till I'm done. Like I should go through this whole thing or whatever. And once I've like come out on the other side, then I can share it and use that later on, which is a thing. Sometimes that's a thing. But like I told you, I really feel like the Holy Spirit was saying, you know, um, I should share some of these things now. And basically it's just where I'm walking at. Okay. And what I've been kind of um, learning. And it's things that I feel like I've been teaching you guys for a long time. But then I have to also continue to do those myself like when I'm in those hard times. Does that make sense? Okay. So basically, um, see, someone else is going to have to talk about this. Okay. We're going to skip that part for a minute. Here's the thing. Um, I believe that the Lord has my best interest in mind. Okay, do you guys believe that? Like in your life, like where you're going, if you're seeking him, you believe that he has what's good for you, even if it's sometimes hard to go through? Well, I believe that he has my very best interest in mind. Um, I believe he knows what I can handle. And I really believe that I have to keep my faith in that. We should stop. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to read two scriptures to you that I found. Um, as I've been like kind of reading through the word of God lately, I've been finding a lot of scriptures that kind of convey how I feel, but then like kind of angry or sad or whatever. And then I tried, I have some matching scriptures that are more uplifting. Okay. So this first one I found is Psalms 143. It's verses three and four. And it says, the enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows faint within me and my heart within me is dismayed. So basically that's kind of like a sad scripture, right? Like it's just talking about how sometimes the enemy just can get us so down and discouraged and upset. Um, And that's how I really feel sometimes. But then I found this other one that I feel like is more uplifting. So this is Psalm 73, 23 through 26. It says, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards you will take me into your glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but my God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So basically, um, a couple weeks ago, it's probably been about three weeks ago, I had to go to the doctor and it was really awkward. Um, I was by myself, which I usually am, because it's like when you're going to have a baby, there's no point. Like after the first kid, like I just go, it's like five minutes. They like check the heartbeat and they just measure your stomach and they're like, have a good day. So there's no point in anyone going with me, right? Let me say this is a God thing. The time before, I took all my kids. I do not know why I didn't have anyone to watch them. I took all three of my girls and I thought, oh, this would be cool for them to hear the heartbeat. And so now looking back on what's going on, like I was so thankful that that was the week that I didn't have anyone to help me and I had to take them because they got to hear our baby's heartbeat. It was really cool and fun. And then this next time was not as fun. So um, basically I went to the doctor. They've always had trouble finding the heartbeat. Like there was just the way the baby was. They were having trouble, but they always found it, right? So this time I'm laying there and this lady's looking for a long time and I'm not really nervous, but I'm a tiny, like smidgy nervous. And um, she like cannot find it and it feels like forever. It's like 10 minutes, I think, but it could have been less. Um, And I asked her, I was starting to get a little panicky. I was kind of praying, but at this point I don't really feel like anything is going on that I should be concerned about. But I asked her and she lied to me, by the way. I said, hey, should I be nervous? And she's like, no way, which is her job. She should tell me not to be nervous. But I was like, okay, like I'm not nervous. And she says to me, by the way, I'm supposed to be finding out if I'm having a girl or a boy. And so she says to me, hey, we, and I was supposed to find out a couple days later. I had to come back. And so she says, we're just going to go do an ultrasound, which they've done several times already before, right? And so she says, we're just going to go in there. And so I'm kind of a little excited because I'm like, okay, this is like the Lord is just going to let me know what I'm having today because he knows I really want to know, and he's going to just work this out. So this is kind of a good thing. But I text my husband, and I say, hey, I just need to pray for me. I'm a little nervous. Like, I'm sure everything's fine. I don't want you to say anything to anyone. But I'm like, they had a little trouble, and it was like just weird me out, right? So I tell him that, and he's like, okay, like, tell me what's going on. So he leaves, and then my doctor comes in. So there's a nurse who does that, right? My doctor comes in, 
And he only tried for a second. But at this point, I'm feeling like just my spirit. You know, I don't know if you guys ever feel this. Like, in my spirit, just started feeling weird. Okay? So he checks, and he doesn't check for very long, but he doesn't hear anything either. And I start, like, little tears. You're laying down. Like, little tears are, like, coming out of my eyes. And I'm like, stop it. Like, you're acting like an idiot, and everything's going to be fine. And you're like, this man's going to be like, lady, like, you're a little, like, just calm down. So he says to me, follow me. And now I'm, like, crying, walking down the hall. Like, I'm getting progressively worse because I'm trying not to. And so I'm like, and he even told me, he says, hey, it's okay. Like, this is not a thing, right? It's not really a thing. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, like, getting worse. Like, and it's starting to get into an ugly cry where I'm like, get yourself together. Because I'm not a crier. Listen, before I had children, guys, I did not cry. Now, commercials come on, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so sad. It could be like a toilet paper commercial. I don't know. <laughs> Random things make me cry. So I'm trying not to cry and make a big specs of myself because I am literally thinking in my head as I'm crying, okay, we're going to get in here. He's going to find the heartbeat, and I'm going to explain to him Hey, I'm really sorry about the shenanigans of the crying. I have done this twice before, and I just got nervous, so you're going to have to forgive me. Like, I played this whole thing I was going to tell him. As soon as he says to me, here it is. Like, everything's great. And also, here's what you're having. Right? So I'm, like, talking myself into this. And um, it did not take very long. And I will tell you, I will never forget this doctor. We're so in the sonogram room. So now I can see, like, the picture of the baby. It's not just hearing. And he just gave me the saddest look you've ever seen in your life. And I was not prepared for that because I was ready to say, Sorry, I'm crazy, you know? So he gives me this sad look, and it's basically he tells me that our baby has passed away. And I'm thinking to myself, I cannot believe this is a thing. And I'm, now I'm crying a lot more, and I'm trying to stop it. I'm like, okay, you need to, like, focus and, like, wrap around, like, I'm not saying the speech. I've got to figure out, like, all these questions. And all of a sudden, from this point on, for the next several days, I was, like, bombarded with questions that I cannot even explain to you. People could be asking me things, and I was like... I literally have no idea. Like, I have no clue what I'm supposed to answer. I have no clue what direction I'm going. And I'm just thinking, I now have to tell everybody. Oh, I forgot a really important part. This is really sad. My mom, we were going to do a reverse reveal. So we were going to tell both of our moms what they were going to give the card to our moms. And they were going to plan this big thing. So my mom and my mother-in-law during my appointment had planned this whole scavenger hunt, all these rhyming clues and this whole thing, right? So I'm thinking to myself, I got to call them. And I'm going to have to tell them that's a stupid party and we're not having it, right? Because I'm very upset. But I don't do that yet. So I, my doctor starts talking to me. He starts giving me all these options, these things, and I'm literally overwhelmed. And I'm just like, I don't know. So I leave there. And by the way, this is a really terrible thing. They make you walk back out through all these people who are waiting. Like, there's no back door. You have to go back out. And I remember um, one of my first appointments, there was a lady who had to walk out. And she was crying. And she was with her, I assume, her husband. And her face was all red. And I told Ryan... I said, that woman, I bet you just lost her baby. And I was so heartbroken for her. I prayed for her for that day, and I prayed for her for several days because not only did I assume she'd lost her baby, then I had, I, she had to just walk through this whole huge lobby of people, right? And so she just really was on my heart. So instantly I thought of her again where I'm thinking, now I'm that lady who has to walk out here crying and like red-faced and awkward, right? So I go out. And I leave, and I go, I call my husband, and then I go to his work, and then I have to call my mom, and I have to tell her. And then um, that's basically all I did besides just go home and go to bed after that. So during this whole time, I am praying, right? I am seeking the Lord in prayer. Um, I have my Bible, but I'm not really opening it, and I don't really know why. I just wasn't. Like, um, one of the things was I had to decide we were going to go to the hospital and we had to, like, I had to give birth to the baby. And then I had to decide when and where and all these things. And I brought my Bible. Like, I packed it in. I was like, I'm going to read my Bible. And I never opened it. Like, I literally just, I wasn't angry. It was just this weird feeling I don't know how to explain to you. I just didn't want to. So, um, over the course of the next few days, people are calling, people are texting, people are writing letters, you know. Um, some people are emailing me, different things. And um, I was getting really angry. Like, Everything anyone said to me, whether it was nice, whether it was true, whether it was sometimes people say silly things, everything takes me off. Like, people are like, oh, we're praying for you. And I'd be like, no, you're not. You didn't even pray anyways. Like, really rude and hateful things, like, in my thing. As people are trying to encourage me, I'm like, yeah, right, you're silly. Like, what you guys know what I think silly means, right? Because it's rude to say it. I'm not going to say the other one. But anyways, I think it means stupid, right? So, But these are my thoughts because I am not angry, but I'm not getting angry, right? And so anything anyone's saying to me, and I'm still not opening my Bible. Now, I'm praying. And I'm kind of questioning, I'm doing all these things, but I'm like not opening my Bible. Well, I have a lady who texted or messaged me, and she's like, you know, she said, Rachel, um, she said at times, like, the Satan comes, and you guys have all heard the scripture probably, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? She said, so right now, you're mad at all these people who, you know, whatever the situation was, 
You're mad at all these people who are saying things to you. You're mad that people aren't feeling the way you feel because no one can like walk through things with you. They can, or they can walk with you, but they cannot feel exactly what you're feeling, right? So I was literally like mad at everybody. And um, like my brother, he would like fist bump me and be like, hey, how are you doing today? And it would really make me mad I'm like, dude, you don't even ask me how I'm doing on a normal day. Like, so like things like that would make me mad, which is silly because he's trying to be nice to me. Um, and so she tells me, she says, you know what? She's like, you need to be in the word of God because that's where the truth is. That's where his encouragement is. And so all the other people want to encourage me, like I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. I still really don't want to talk to people and see people. Um, which is weird, because you guys don't like to talk a lot, right? I feel anxious when people say, can we hang out? You can ask Shanda. I canceled on like three times. I was like, sorry, I can't hang out. And I was like, yeah, let's hang out a different time. I was like, sorry, last night. I'm like, I cannot go out tonight. Like, I just feel super panicky about being with people, which is not me. And so all these things that are happening and going on are weirding me out on top of what's happening and going on because I don't feel like myself. So um, she tells me, you know, if you want to run and hide in your room, you can. But she said, but you need to hide with God. Like, allow him in there. And I thought... Well, that's probably true. So about a week after this happened, I finally, I, my kids were gone for the day, and I just sat down and literally all day long, I just read the word, I was reading books, I was journaling, I was doing all these things, and for the first time, I literally felt like this peace. Like I had this peace because I couldn't really change the situation, it was what it was, so I have to have this peace, but I just, being in the word of God, really just gave me a different overwhelming sense of peace. Does that make sense? Which I had been avoiding because I just was. I wasn't purposely. Does that make sense? I just was avoiding it. But so I spent this whole day and I just journaled and I wrote a lot of things. Um, you know, some of the things I wrote, I'm just going to share straight out of my journal with you. But like, I believe that Jesus is the same as he was before all this happened, just like he was then, just like he is now. Right? And I think sometimes... Satan comes in and tries to start talking to us like, well, why do you allow this to happen? Or why is this going on? Or why if you've prayed, have you, you know, all these just like things and these thoughts that are coming in. But you know what? He is still the very same. And I think that in times that are good and times that are bad, we have to cling to what truth is right? Which is the word of God, which is some of these songs. These are two songs that we played, those last two. I had loved these songs before all this, right? But I always associated them with other people. And I told you I cry at commercials. Whenever the words, the song where it says, and hope is alive, it kept caught in my throat and made me cry um, before all this for other people who were hurting, right? And it was just almost like a prayerful song for me. And so then all of a sudden, now it was like a thing for me. Do you know what I mean? Like where I had been like projecting that onto other people. And, um, <clears throat> Same thing with this song by Lauren Daigle. It's the one that says, when you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. And when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will still trust in you. Okay, and that's a hard thing. Like, and that's something I've been really struggling with. Like, how come if I've been in prayer about certain situations or things, I've been asking, I've been praying, I've been asking for the Lord's will, not my own. Like, so why are these things going on, right? But I have to still cling to this. Like, when he doesn't necessarily, the answers don't turn out the way I want them to, or the way I thought they were going to, like, I still trust in him, and I have to, because if I don't, I am going to literally probably go crazy, you know what I'm saying, and so that's the same thing for you guys, like, as you're going through whatever it is that you are walking through, or you might walk through eventually, or something, like, we have got to hold on to the fact that we trust God, he is the same, he has my best interest in hand, and I trust him, do I agree with him, and am I overly happy about it, no, it really actually makes me kind of annoyed, but, I still trust in it, and I'm not going to be able to see this entire thing playing out until later on. And something some people tell me a lot is, oh, well, God's going to use this for, like, your story or whatever. And I'm kind of thinking, well, that's dumb. I'll take a different story. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's very true. And so if I've always asked for the Lord to do big things in my life or to use me however he wants, then I have to accept to be used however he wants, right? Um, here's a quick little story. I wasn't going to share it, but I'm going to share it, I think. But, um, so I had to go in the hospital and I gave birth, right? And before I went in, everybody told me all these awful stories, horrible stories. They were like, the, the nurses are kind of cold and mean. Everyone's going to treat you like, bleh, whatever. They're going to try to push you out of the hospital. I mean, just awful, awful things people were telling me about their experiences of kind of a similar situation. And so I was just praying the night before over like, who would be my nurses? Who would be there that day? Because I really didn't feel like I could handle stupidness okay that day and I am telling you so I had to go in at 5 a.m. and I had the most amazing nurses like um, this first girl she was only there two hours she was very sweet and nice and she just talked to me a little bit but then this guy comes in right and he's gonna be with me all day for 12 hours his name's Dan and at first I'm thinking oh my gosh she's going to annoy me because he was just like really kind of happy and kind of like 
annoying, I thought, and I was like, ugh, Dan, how am I going to have him all day long? But really, he was the most incredible person that I've ever met. Like, I would like to go meet him again and bring him a card or a cake, I don't know what, but um, he talked to me all day long. He actually, through our conversations, turns out he's a believer. So we had a lot of different talks that day about, you know, heaven and just he deal like this is his job. He it works on this floor with people who are sick and who are different situations besides mine. But you know what I mean? Like he's he's not like overly great floor that he's working on. It's very a uh, sad floor. So he is like so kind and we're just talking and he's kind of bothering Ryan. My husband's trying to sleep over here on this couch and I'm like, you know, he's just resting. But um, so this guy keeps coming in and I'm like. I did want a little sleep. I did want a little time to kind of process. But throughout the day, I was like, this guy is really, I feel like the Lord has brought him to me, right? And then my doctor, the different nurses that had to come in and do different things, and all the groups that came and talked to you, like, everybody was so incredibly amazing to me that I really feel like this was one of the best days of my life for, like, the worst of circumstances. Does that make sense? Like, I was so just truly blessed, and I really feel like the Lord <coughs> was covering me that day. Like, as upset as I was, like, I was also oddly at peace. Have you guys ever felt that, like, this odd piece? Like, it's just, it could have been some of the pain drugs, but I really think it was the Lord. But I like to throw that in there. It could have been a little something. Um, so basically, um, I was also scared. People told me to, like, look up pictures and different things so I could kind of know what to expect. Don't do that. That freaked me out. Where I think, then I'm, like, starting to get panicky. Anyways, so I have her. And it was, like, the most precious thing I've ever seen. Like, I was, like, this. I didn't want anyone to come to the hospital. You can ask my parents. I was, like, no one talked to me. No one's coming up here. Like, Pastor could not come. He came in anyway. He did not listen to me. Um, but I felt, like, this proud mom in the moment where I would, like, I would have liked to invite you all up there. I was, like, everyone come see. Like, my mom came in, and everyone's, like, crying. And I am, like, oddly happy, right? And I, again, maybe a little bit of the drugs. But I really believe it was the Lord covering me through this very hard situation. And I'm just, like, showing her off. And I'm, like, telling them all about, like, look at you know all these different things about her and um it was a girl and I don't know if you guys know we named her Madison and um I'm just like on cloud nine it is the weirdest thing I don't know how to explain it except for the fact that it was God and I believe that again when we are walking through those things if we allow him to he will carry us he is there always it's just whether we choose to see him or not so um moving on I'm oddly happy right and so the whole day was just really amazing. It was really very lovely. Um, now here's the thing. Am I feeling kind of shattered still throughout all these different joys that are like popping up every once in a while? I am. I feel completely at a loss. I feel like my faith is being tested in certain areas where I am questioning but not, like I'm just trying to process maybe. Um, but here's the thing I also think, is this is nothing that my God cannot piece back together. Okay, wherever I'm walking, wherever I'm feeling shattered, whatever, he's going to put it back together. He's going to make it whole again, and he's going to use it for his good if I allow him to. And that is what I so want to do because I don't, again, want to be hypocritical. I don't want to say when things are going good, I trust in him, I'm whatever. Like, I want to, that hopefully my life will reflect that during those times. Um, another couple of things, I feel like there was a little tiny bit of hope I didn't really share with you. In those couple of days, like, I was, like, praying. Have you guys heard that song, um, Tell Your Heart to Beat Again? Silly song. I love it. Um, I was praying that. Like, I was really praying that God would do a miracle. And also, by the way, I knew that was probably not going to be the case. Just from certain things that went on and stuff. Like, um, in my spirit, I kind of knew. But I still was praying that because here's the thing. I believe that God can do anything he wants. And I don't know if you guys remember the story of David. We actually just kind of talked about it a little bit. When they said his son was going to die, he got on his knees and he prayed every second until it was a done deal. And then he got up after they said, you know, he's passed away. And he, he went back to serving the Lord and, and doing whatever. He got back to life, I guess. And I kind of felt that same way. Like, I'm going to pray until the very second that it's a done deal. And I did. And, it, and I, that also kind of brought me some encouragement. Um, so that was something I prayed. That song just came over and over again. Like, I really wanted God to tell her heart to beat again. And then, if he didn't, I wanted to have that be my prayer. Like, I want my heart to continue. Um, so anyways, so here's the deal. I believe the same God who raised people from the dead was forming our baby. Okay. And in Psalms 139, 15 it says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. So this is something that I've kind of processed through, um, a while ago. So this brings us to John chapter 11 and it's the story of Lazarus. You guys all know the story of Lazarus. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk to you about it a little more. Um, 
I'm just going to read to you a little bit and then I'll talk to you through it. Okay, so Lazarus, or chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with her ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. And this is one of my favorite scriptures because I feel like each of us at times becomes the one that he loves that is ill. Okay? And so for me, now in these last couple of weeks, like that's how I feel. I feel like the one, like crying out to him, like I am the one who is sick and I need him to come in and help me. So, um, they basically, Jesus is gone, right? He's away. And so the sisters write a letter and they say, hey, he's sick. And Lazarus, like Jesus loves him. Like maybe kind of like his best friend or one of his best friends, right? He loves him. And so the sisters send message or word to him and they say, hey, he is sick. He's ill. Like you need to come back and help him basically. So verse four says, but when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when, they, when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two more days longer in the place where he was. And then after this, he sent to the disciples and let us go to, he said, let us go to Judea again. So basically he finds out he's sick and most of us would think he should do what? Run Rush back. Go help him. He's not doing well, right? Um, and they're concerned enough to send a message to Jesus. And what does he say? He says, hey, he's sick. But I'm going to hang out here a couple more days, and then we'll head over. And that is actually a very significant point to this story, which we're going to come back to in just a minute. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to decide what I'm going to share. I'm not sure. So, basically, um, Jesus ends up coming. And do you guys know what has happened by the time Jesus arrives? He's dead. He's dead, and he's buried. Right? He's in his tomb. He's been all wrapped up in his cloth. And Jesus comes. And also, by the way, in those couple of days, the sisters, do you guys know what they were doing? They were praying, but they were also going to the city gates and watching for Jesus. And they're thinking he's going to show up any minute, right? And so they kept going and checking and checking. And every time, they don't see him. And they're thinking to themselves, what is going on? Now, Jesus knows what's going on. He knows the entire plan. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what's already happening. But he's... he's the only one, right? Whereas the girls don't know while they're looking, while they're waiting, while they're praying and begging and hoping, and then their brother dies and they bury him. And can you only imagine the things that they're starting to feel and starting to think like, why would he not come, you know, when we told him? Why would he not come and help us? And that is a very normal feeling for those of us because we're human, right? We have those feelings of why wouldn't you answer the prayer? Why wouldn't you fix it? Why wouldn't you come when I called you? But it's because Jesus knows what the plan is and he knows what's going to happen. So if we read a little bit more, um, in verse 14, it says, Then Jesus told them plainly. La oh, they asked, like, where were you? And he says, what's going on? And he, Jesus tells them, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So basically, he's like, yes, he has died. And I mean, again, can you imagine the sisters being like, hello? Like, where are you at? And he says, um, I'm glad I was not there for your sake. Which, do you guys know what this is leading up to? Yes. What? Him bringing Lazarus back. Yes. He is going to bring Lazarus back from the dead, but he doesn't want to just come. If he came right away, and then it couldn't necessarily have just been like, oh, it was a fluke, he wasn't really sick, or he wasn't that sick, right? Or, oh, maybe he just kind of fallen asleep or in a little bit of a coma. I don't think they called it at that point, but you know what I'm saying? So Jesus had to wait good and long to make sure he was dead. The people at that time believed that you, um, there was a three-day process where... Um, I guess, I think you're, if I remember right, your spirit kind of hangs around your body for a couple of days before it goes on. So he wanted to wait that time so that really when he does this huge miracle that nobody could say, oh, it was just like a fluke, right? He wanted everyone to know that it was him, which is why he says to them, I was glad I was not there so that you guys might believe. And so then basically he says, he goes in through the story, he tells Lazarus come out and the man comes out and everyone's astonished, right? And all this glory goes to the Lord because of what he's done, because of the miracle. Now, I certainly believe in miracles. Do you guys believe in miracles? Yes. I have heard of several, 
um, a lot of different things. Um, I will tell you, I had a friend who was in my wedding who they told them that their baby did not have a heartbeat and they had passed away and then they were going to go and do all this process. And then right before she had an ultrasound and this baby had a heartbeat and now she's four years old. Like, so there's things like that. You know what I mean? I don't know if there was technical error. I believe because they're believers and there was a lot of prayer. I believe that the Lord did a miracle there and saved their child. Right? So, but that he also doesn't always answer the way we want. Right? He doesn't, he didn't always do that. Um, here's a couple of the scriptures I found out. This first one's kind of sad um, that I felt like I related to. It says Psalms. So I have some Psalms. Psalms is sad and good. Okay, Psalms 6, 6 through 7 says, I am worn out from all of my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. And I was like, oh my word, that is me. Okay, but here's Jeremiah 23, I'm sorry, 32, 17 through 19. It says, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. O oh, great and powerful God, whose name is the Lord Almighty, great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. And so I really, again, I probably have said this already, I just feel like the Lord and his power is definitely mighty. And I feel like these are all things that we must cling to when we're walking through this. Because a lot of times, if we're honest, I don't think we want to, right? A lot of times we don't want to get in the scripture. We don't want to listen to words. We don't want anyone to even encourage us, right? We just want to kind of be. Do you guys want to just be sometimes? Anyone? A couple of you are like barely shaking your head a little bit. Thank you. Just want to be, right? That's how I wanted. I just want to be left alone. People would not leave me alone. And I am so thankful people would not leave me alone. Um, I kind of already told you how I responded to people when they were calling me and talking to me. And how are you? People ask me a lot, how are you? All the time. And they also ask me, what can I do for you? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, no one can do anything. But, like, I just have to walk this. But that is so weird, by the way. Like, how are you? Like, what should I say? Like, I'm devastated. I really want to, like, lay on the ground and cry and, like, just kick me. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, so I just tell people, oh, fine. Like, good. I'm doing good, you know? Sure but honestly, you what? Sure Listen, um, especially in the first week, I would really have. I, I told my mom, I said, you what? I just go get me a taco. I should. I should. I should. Well, um, I won't tell you some of the ugly things that I really wanted to say because I wanted to say, like, really rude things to people. But I did tell my mom at one point. I said, Mom, I am not fit for public. Like, if I go in public, like, my Christian side of me, I feel like, gives me this filter. So sometimes that I, like, stop myself. But I'm like, I did not have a filter where I thought I could really just say something silly to somebody when they ask me something funny. Bless them. I love people. Okay. But here's the thing. Um... Through this time, too, like, it's been such an amazing thing to watch my kids, my three girls, okay? Um, we didn't let them come to the hospital. I kind of wanted to, but then it was kind of weird, so we didn't. But um, we've just been praying and talking, and, like, I feel like all of a sudden I have these three. Well, the little one, she's not, you know, she's kind of. But I feel like I have these two really amazing prayer warriors all of a sudden. Like, my kids, when they pray, they, like, almost say the same thing all the time. I try to, like, talk to them. We change it up every once in a while. But I'm like, they don't really, I don't really necessarily hear their hearts when they're praying. Does that make sense? Because they're just, like, saying a memorized prayer. Like, Braylon always says, please bow your heads and close your eyes. And then she says, Lord, and she prays for the food, and she might pray for someone who's sick, and then she's done, right? But it's always the same, every single time. In fact, you know, one time Kyler was like, we know, she always says that to us, and it makes me laugh. Like, because, no, it's so funny, I don't mean that mean. Because she does, and I'm like, don't start your prayer at the same time, everyone. Bow your heads and close your eyes. So, but here's the thing. Through this, we've been praying with them, and I've been allowing them to pray. And just listening to their hearts has been so incredible for me as a mom. So, like, I really feel like they're, like, getting this like prayer warrior thing and even um Peyton I was taking her to school one day and she's like mom I just like to pray really fast and I said okay so she prayed quietly and I couldn't hear she said did you hear that I was like no and she says well I prayed you know blah 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 for the baby and she says and I prayed it would snow again today and it just made me laugh because I was like their hearts are so sweet you know and just like even their tenderness of like wanting to be with me and like bring me food or like take care of me has been such a sweet and precious thing for me um so I really feel very blessed about that um and just very humbled when I stopped being kind of ugly. Like, very humbled by the people that do love me and do want to reach out to me. And I believe, again, that the Lord has brought different people in my life. I mean, I got some cards from people that I'm, like, not necessarily really friends with. Like, we are friends, right? But, like, just the people who, and I felt, okay. So, basically, I, people from all over, different states were sending me things that I maybe talked to, like, a handful of times, right? And I felt so convicted about um, maybe how I treat others during hard times like we're all we can all probably admit we're probably good to our people right like our friends and our family like we're really good about like reaching out and like seeking and loving on like during hard times would you guys agree if your friends are hurting you're like there for them right which I feel like I'm decent at 
But these people are people that I really have not talked to that much in my entire life were sending me cards that they wrote in these nice messages and I felt so convicted by that that I thought that's something I should do a little more. To people, not just my people, right? But to people, if I know somebody who's hurting or somebody whatever who's not necessarily in my group, like why am I not reaching out to them? Like why am I only extending myself in this little circle instead of maybe where God's calling me out over here a little bit more? So that was something I wanted to share with you guys that was really cool to me that I thought I would like to be more in tune with what's going on around me and not just right around me um so maybe maybe you guys will consider that too um another thing is that i really like this is a quote from a book i read but it says christ isn't threatened by my heartbreak or my questioning just as he isn't threatened by any rainstorm he knows that the rain is going to fall and he knows that i will fall so here's the thing i think sometimes too guys we feel like we have to be like we can't question, we can't be mad, we can't be whatever, like we just have to like go along. And that is not what he's asking us to. Like I do have to still trust and I still have to, I feel like I should be respectful out of reverence and stuff. But like he's not mad if I question him. I'm like, why is this going on? He's not mad if I'm like get angry about it or whatever. Like he knows that I'm just human, that I'm going to have all these things kind of going through my head. But the main thing that you have to come back to is that he knows and he's going to take care of it and that I am still trusting in him. Because I really think a lot of times when hard things happen, people just leave right people leave churches people like give up on god right they just kind of go on because they're mad and they're angry and they're bitter and that is not the point i feel like those are the times that we're supposed to really cling to him even more and that's where we're going to be tested because our faith is going to be tested it tells us all over the bible it's going to be tested so what happens when the first time something bad happens and you just run where is that talking about where you kind of are lying with your faith before that what do you think you're probably not very well rooted. Now, I do know somebody who I grew up their entire life who I felt was fairly well rooted and uh, just completely atheist now or whatever. Like, they're done. Like, and I don't think even anything bad happened. They just changed their mind, you know? So, what I would say to you is being well rooted, but in truth, not just in surface level stuff where you're kind of like, oh, we have this relationship, we have this whatever. Like, dig in, guys, and become well rooted because I am telling you that is one of the only things that I really feel like has um, allowed me, this might sound silly, but like to get out of bed, because for all I was like, I'm staying in bed the rest of my life. I'm not joking, I probably told 10 people that. I'm never getting out. Um, but that truth that has been rooted into me, and I had to go back in. I didn't just start like quoting scriptures and just start like whatever. I had to get back into it and be reminded and have the Lord share with me and, and speak to me through whether it was the word of God, songs, people encouraging me. Like I had to be reminded of that because I didn't really want to hear any of it. So that is something that I really, really wish I could impress upon you guys. Like, be rooted. Be in the word and know. And be um, willing to cling to truth and not those lies that Satan's going to bring in because I guarantee you he's going to be bringing them in. Some of this stuff is kind of weird. I'm not going to tell you all of it. Um, sorry. Um, here's another thing. So like I told you earlier, I feel like for whatever reason, this is now going to become part of my story. Like, so am I going to use it as an open door to share my faith? I really hope so. And that's why I'm telling you, it started kind of in the hospital, talking with the different doctors and the nurses and like being able just to talk. And like, I wanted to be an encouragement to them that day. Like I didn't want to act like a crazy person. I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to be hateful, even though a little part of me wanted to be like just mad not at anyone, but I just want to be mad. Um, and I was thinking, you know, what a cool opportunity that was that I had just in those very first few moments, because I had to talk to a lot of people, like all these groups come in and talk to you and talk to you and talk to you. And I thought during that time, like, I really wanted to be a good witness, even in the way that I was behaving. And you know, one of my nurses told me, his name's Dan, he said, sometimes people think that they can just do whatever they want because they're hurting or whatever. He said one time somebody punched him. I'm like, that is rude. Like, you should not punch people and your nurses. But um, people, like, you know, cursing them out, different things because they're mad. And so you're lashing out at somebody that's not even his thing. He's trying to help you. And so I thought, I don't usually punch people or curse. So um, I didn't really want to do that anyways. But, like, I still wanted to be a good example through all of this to him. And I hope that I was. But now I hope that I continue to do so through this. Like, I hope that my kids will see how I'm like handling it and dealing with it and behaving like which I'm not always good at. Um, I hope that that ministers to them, right? I hope that it ministers to other people and I hope that at some point um, it will start helping people. Does that make sense? 
through whatever. And that's, did I already tell you this? I'm so sorry, did I tell you? So my friend told me, she's like, we need to help people through our struggles, not when they're all done. And so that is why I really felt like I should share with you guys today the main thing of like digging in and trusting in the Lord because I do want that to be something that's used for him and I don't want to hold it off like I don't want to say well maybe in a couple years or maybe when I'm feeling whatever like I don't want to wait because what if the Lord is wanting to use that now and I don't want to stop that right you're so sweet okay um and then the last thing uh that I want to share with you guys back to Lazarus I feel like um, identifying with the sisters, and you guys know, you know what I'm talking about, Mary and Martha? Like, one, like, loved, like, was, like, wanted to sit and listen, and one was, like, the busy bee or whatever, and I feel like sometimes I'm super busy, and I get myself involved in a lot of things that I probably shouldn't, like, because I can, so I'm like, oh, I'll help over here, or I'll go over here, and I'll go do this, and I feel like as busy and as crazy and as hurried as my life usually is sometimes, like, um, God is asking me to, like, just stop and to listen and to just be still, which is very hard for me. It is super hard. I even feel like I've cut a lot of things out this year and I'm still so busy. So um, I think that's another thing that, that he taught with Mary and Martha. He said, just sit and just listen. Like, don't worry about making all these, um, the dinner and all the things and cleaning and doing all this stuff, right? He just wants us to listen to him. And so what is he gonna tell us when we're listening? And are we even stopping to listen? And so I just was thinking, I imagine, how they felt that day when they were running to the gates and when they were looking and when they were waiting and God's just sitting back the whole time being like I have this like under control and are we willing to trust that and also am I willing to not be so busy so that I can be listening and so that I can hear either how he's comforting me or what he's asking me to do or what he's teaching me because I believe that those are all things that he does um also, guys, I don't need an explanation. Like, I kind of want one sometimes, but, like, I don't need God to explain to me why I am going the way I'm going. Does that make sense? Same thing with you guys. Like, do you guys ever feel like you want to know why? Yes, we're trying to look at people. Only, like, five people that shake their heads usually. But, yeah, I think that's a natural thing we want to know why. But um, we don't necessarily need him to answer. It'd be nice if he did. I actually know why um, this thing happened. I don't know why it actually happened, but I know what happened. Um... But here's the thing, guys. We have a limited viewpoint, okay, well, on what's going on here. And Satan, he's going to do everything in his power to continue to make me feel anxious. He's going to do everything in his power to make me question. He's going to do everything to make me think that Christ did not come in and rescue me and he didn't save this, you know, the baby and he didn't fix it, right? He's going to make me think all these things instead of me being able to focus on um, just the the awesomeness of what has actually taken place, right? Like I told you it was the best day for the worst. This may sound weird to you. I really feel like I wish I could just go relive that day over and over again, which sounds really weird. But like just the piece of it is as the, I cannot explain to you guys that I wish that I was able to stay in that. But again, sometimes I get so busy and I get distracted and I can feel it. Can you guys feel it? Like if you're not in the word or if you're not talking to God or if you're not like trying to have a relationship, can you feel that in your lives sometimes? I can feel like even the last couple of days I did a garage sale, so I wasn't really, I didn't really read anything. And I felt like yesterday, like I was telling you, I was like getting super anxious about talking. And I thought, it's because I have not, again, drawn back into this source, this power that the Lord gives me through the Holy Spirit to be able to do some things um, because I was getting so busy, right? Or I'm trying to distract myself or whatever. And so it is so, so important that we are in the Word, guys. And I think that's kind of where I'm just going to leave it. Um, Mary and Martha couldn't really see what the Lord was doing and how he was responding to the situation. And I can't always see that. I can't see the outcome, but I trust in it. And I would really pray that whatever you guys are walking through, um, it's just as important. Like everybody's thing is important, right? Sometimes I think people like to judge like, well, my troubles are worse than Layla's troubles, right? And her troubles are worse than Jenny's, right? We try to like levelize out where we're going. And that's not true, guys. Our hurts are our hurts. Like our valleys are our valleys. And so it doesn't matter if they're different, they're ours. And so are we able to just trust whatever's gonna be happening? Whenever that kind of happens, I just always like say in my mind, God has a path. Yeah. You have to. And here's the thing. I'll tell you this. Um, it's a little side note. So I've been kind of posting some scriptures or just some different quotes or things on my Facebook. And somebody said to me, oh, I see you must be doing really great because you're posting all these things. And I was like, hello. 
I am not doing great. But here's the thing. I have to read it. I have to write it. I have to put it on my Facebook. I have to say it as much as I have to so that I continue to remember what the truth is instead of allowing that other stuff to get in because I'm telling you it will. And it's going to continue to go that way. I will have to continue to do it. But it doesn't mean that I'm just fine and dandy. But what it means is I am going to continue to speak truth to myself to continue to like move forward. Does that make sense? And it's so important. I wish I knew so much more scripture. Like I know people who just like quote scripture like when they're randomly talking and I'm like, I wish I could do that. I can like half quote you stuff, right? I'm like, oh, here's what half this verse says and wherever and I don't even know where it's at, right? But I'm like, Satan cannot twist the word of God, right? He cannot take away those truths that you're speaking if you're speaking scripture. And that is something I feel convicted about because otherwise I might start speaking junk right I might start gossiping right and then I'm starting to roll over there right I might start being angry at a person right there's all these different things because if the if I'm allowing Satan to kind of get into my words and my thoughts then that's going to come out but if I'm speaking scripture or if I'm like focusing on what the Lord is telling me then that is hopefully what is going to come out because what is going into your heart is what's going to be coming out so um I really hope that you guys along with myself will continue to listen and obey and praise the Lord as you're walking through um, different things. And this is one more thing. I'm going to read this to you. And then I'll be done for all. I said it like three times. But I'm going to be done. Okay, I did look up. So it says the word trial. You guys all know what a trial is? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you. In the Old Testament, it's a noun. It's from the Hebrew word Sarah, which comes from the root, root word it's SRH. I don't know how I'm supposed to say that, but I don't know. It says to bind, to tie up, and to restrict. Thus the noun comes to... Um, I can't read my handwriting. Okay, basically it means there's a narrow place in life where one is bound or restricted. Okay? And so as I'm reading this, a trial is where a narrow place, so a short time, where in your life where you're bound or restricted. And I just kind of wrote... Um, I must walk with the God of the universe moment by moment, the God who chose Abraham and the God who chose me, okay? And as I feel restricted and bound by my situation, by my loss of control, by my helplessness, by the loss um, of a precious gift that I so desperately wanted, I have to realize that Christ himself is not unfamiliar with being bound, okay? And in Isaiah 53, 5, it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed so basically guys he was bound and went through a trial for me so i know that he uh, can identify with me i know that he's not abandoned me that he's not forgotten me like he's been through way worse right i just said we shouldn't level but his is way worse because <laughs> he took on the, everything from the world okay but um and i just found that so comforting as i was kind of reading that like and this is a short time. This whole thing. My, our lives are a very short time. You know what I mean? And then eventually we will be in heaven if we are believers. And then all the whole picture will be clear to us. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Thank you for sharing that with me. So, okay. I'm not going to continue on because I feel like I have a thousand things now I'm going to try to say. But um, I'm just going to pray for us. I'm just going to pray for our weeks. And I'm just going to pray for you guys. Um, like I said, I believe that all of us are walking through trials, whatever they may be. And... Um, I would love to pray for you individually. If you want me to, you can shoot me a text or just tell me. But otherwise, I just want to pray for you guys individually as you are all walking through life. That you would walk with the Lord moment by moment. And that you would continue to know that you are loved and that you are taken care of. And that even though you don't understand some things going on, that he does and that he will take care of you. Okay, I'm going to pray. Dearly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much. Um, for your love and for the peace that you give us, Lord, um, whether it's in our good times when everything's going great, Lord, or if it's in these trials, God. And I just ask that you'd be with each person in this room, Lord, as um, some of them are dealing with things going on at home, some people are dealing with things going on at school, Lord, different relationships. I ask, God, that you would just allow people to seek you and your truth, Lord, that we would know and understand how much you love us and how um, just much grace and mercy you pour out on us, Lord, when we're willing to look and when we're willing to listen. Um, God, I ask that you would help us just to listen and to be still, that we could hear you and that we could know your truth and what you're trying to share with us or teach us um, during these times, God. And I do just ask that we would remember that you uh, have done so much more for us, God, because you love us and that we would continue to love you.